Hey guys, welcome back to Classical Recording. I'm your host Tommy G and let's get right into it. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to mix in mono using Pro Tools and why this is helpful for us. Before we get into setting this up, we need to understand why we would want to mix in mono. Mixing in mono allows us to check for separation, phase issues, and helps to ensure that our mix will sound good on a wide variety of speakers. When trying to achieve separation, inexperienced engineers will often start with panning. In a stereo space, this will create separation, but does nothing in mono. By first mixing in mono while using EQ and dynamics, we can ensure that our mix will have good separation. A similar idea holds true for phasing. Often the stereo split can hide potential problems with phasing and frequency cancellations. If we leave these things in, our mix can sound thin, but by mixing in mono, we can catch these phasing issues and correct them appropriately. As well, we need to keep in mind that most people won't be listening on expensive speakers in the perfect environment. Most people will be listening on their phones or car speakers. The problem is that these mediums for listening usually play the audio in mono. So if we have it mixed in mono, how can we ensure our listeners experience? Now that we know why mixing in mono is important, let's head over to the computer and look at getting this set up in Pro Tools. With all of your tracks set up, let's start by creating two new bus paths. To do this, we need to come up to the setup drop down and click on IO. From here, we will select the bus tab and click new path. The first one we can label mono mix and leave as a mono bus. Hit create and you will see that a new bus labeled mono mix has been created. Repeat this process naming the bus submix, but this time make sure that you set the bus to be stereo. Hit create and we will have our two bus paths set up. Now exit out of this window and we will need to create two auxiliary tracks. We can do this by hitting Control shift n on Windows or Command shift n on Mac. From this window, we will want to create one mono and one stereo auxiliary track. You don't have to do this, but I like to rename each of my auxiliary inputs to the purpose they will be serving. From here, we need to set the input of each of these auxiliary tracks. For the mono track, set it to the bus mono mix, and for the stereo, set it to the submix bus. Now if we look at the outputs for all of our tracks, we can see that everything is set up to go to the main output 1 and 2, but we don't want this. Let's start by selecting all of the audio tracks and then holding shift alt and click on the output and change it to the bus path submix that we created earlier. This changes all of the audio tracks to output to the submix bus. Now if we start playing the audio in our tracks, we will see that all of the audio is being routed to the submix bus before going through the master fader. But if we look at the mono mix track, you will see that no audio is going through it. To fix this, we need to add a send on the submix bus. To do this, click on the send and select mono mix path under buses. You will see a fader pop up for which we will want to zero out and set to be pre-fader. You can do this by clicking the pre button above the fader and then either dragging the fader to zero or holding alt while clicking on the fader. Once that is done, all we need to do is solo safe our auxiliary tracks. To do this, all we need to do is hold control and click the solo button on the tracks. We have both a mono and stereo output set up and can switch between them by simply muting and unmuting the different auxiliary tracks. If you enjoyed this week's video, make sure to hit that like button and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.